Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 57 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I'm currently out and about in the world, exploring for stuff. Uh, I'm out looking around for more constellation paper, and I've thus found, uh, found two of them. Uh, so we've got two more constellations that we can go looking for in the sky. Uh, I forget exactly how many they are. Uh, I believe there's about 12. So in theory, there's one more that needs to be found. Uh, and I'll know I've found it when I pick up a piece of constellation paper. And like we saw earlier in the series, it tells me something along the lines of, hey, there's nothing more for you to learn from this. So uh, long story short, hopefully we're getting there. I think one more um would do it so i just need to find some dungeon loot chests so I, I i went exploring the 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 system underneath my base and i went uh flying through the world looking for more um astral sorcery temples and now i also just found like one of those desert temples which you saw me start the episode in and there were chests in there that had some stuff so so far i found two i think i've got one more constellation paper to find and that will fill out everything that is world gen based from um, Astral Sorcery. So kind of just flying around at the moment, exploring, generating some terrain. Uh, villages might have it if I run into any villages. Basically anything with a chest, right? They, these things populate in dungeon loot chests. So uh, looks like I'm running into a bunch of uh, water here, which is usually a bad sign for exploring the world. But I think what I'll do is uh, come back here in a minute when I find another one, and then we'll get started on today's episode. Does that sound cool? Hey, we found a village. Dungeon load. Dungeon load village. What you got for me, village? Oh, this is one of the actually additions houses. I think this only has actually addition stuff in it, though. I don't think I'll find anything like that stuff is all super easy to make and not hard, so I'm not even going to worry about that. I'm looking for like dungeon loot, which might be in like a blacksmith type of house. Do, do, do. That might be what I'm looking for. A uh, moving wand, but nothing else of interest. Poor villagers, you built your house on top of quicksand. That was not very smart, villages. Alright. Continuing to explore more. Back in a minute. Oh, hey, there's one of these things. This usually has something. Oh, there we go. Constellation paper. Discovered Pelo Trio. Nice. So I'm like 95% sure that that is everything I could potentially uh, come across. But I'd feel better if I found another piece of paper that said there's no more constellations for you to find. That would make me feel even the more better. So let me go peek real quick and see if I can't find another one. Just to validate that, yes, we've found every constellation that's available to be found. Let's see if there's anything good loot-wise in here. Yes, three constellation papers. Where were you when I needed you? So yes, the fact that it says there is nothing here is definitely a good sign. Um, if I were playing in a multiplayer world, the right thing to do would be to share this with other players in the world or leave it in the chest for them to find. Uh, but since I'm not, I'll grab it. Because who knows, maybe there'll be a mod update at some point where new constellations are added. And when that happens, I presume I could just take my constellation paper out of my refined storage system and uh, it would work. So, sweet. I have some good stuff. So I've discovered all the things. Uh, now I think the next step for me would probably be to wait until nighttime, which doesn't look too far off. I wanna try and find these in my telescope. What I'd really love is a celestial manipulator. That would be amazing to have right now, but that requires a dragon egg and draconium ingots, which shouldn't be too bad. And wyvern cores, that requires another star. So if I really wanted to get one of these, I would need to kill the dragon and I would need to kill a wither <laughs> doesn't sound fun oh well let's 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 wait for a night to happen and then we're back all right let's see what kind of luck we can have uh poking around the night sky it's getting late i'm thinking there's not a whole lot going on right here Ooh, what do we got here three and then three and kind of uh so constellations probably i'm gonna say it's boots right so like a triangle like a diamond shape here with things coming off the edge Right, so like this. Hey, we discovered boots. Nice, that's awesome. 
So there's a, that one we've been seeing for a while, and we just didn't know what it was. So that's kind of nifty. Uh, nothing else jumping out at me yet. We might have to wait for another evening to come along, because as you guys know, certain constellations are available at certain times of night. Uh, that's fine. Um, it, we, we might just have to wait a little bit later at night, or we might have to uh, wait until another day. Maybe while I'm waiting, I can make something pretty cool. I'd like to try and make an illumination wand. This sounds cool. Ruined marble, two rock crystals, two stardust, a resonating gem. These all fine, seem pretty cool. So stardust times two, uh, illumination powder, was it? What else do we need? Two ruined marble and two rock crystals. Might be getting low on those. I think I have to go find more rock crystals. Resonating wand to the rescue. Let's see, is there any rock crystal formations around here that I can snag? Would be nice. Also, while I'm here, I should probably get out you and, yeah, that's cool. Uh, rock crystals, rock crystals, rock crystals, there's some. Nice. This is like by far the easiest and most straightforward way to find rock crystals. As always, make sure you have your charged porter on your, on your hot bar when you're gonna be digging straight down. You never know what you're gonna run into. But I want to make this illumination wand because it actually holds two purposes. And I want to, A, kind of see what the one purpose looks like, and B, consider using the other purpose for something cool. Um, I think. We'll see. Almost down there? Cool. All right, let's uh, throw these guys in here. And basically two in each direction is enough to get yourself rock crystals. I know I already got them, but... I think that's about it. Yeah, probably no more. Boom. Wow, that was a lot of rock crystals. Look at you, filling up my inventory really quickly. Zoink. And I'll just grab any two of them. It really doesn't matter what. Uh, Attribute-wise, I'm not super worried about attributes anymore because they are so stinking easy to improve now that we've automated pretty much everything about it. So let's do this thing, shall we? So you should have like no problem with power right now, right? Uh, I think rock crystal, rock crystal. This guy needs to be infused. Yay. Come to me, my friend. Do the thing. Thank you. Used up some water there, or some liquid. Uh, what else was the pattern here? So ruined and then stardust on the sides of that guy. You and you. Nice. Fancy crafting time. I do enjoy how fun it is to craft in this mod. So the illumination wand does two things. Uh, if you have sufficient charge, shift right clicking a block will try to convert it to its luminescent state or revert it back to its normal form. Right clicking will create a small flare much like the ones created by the illumination powder. Um, cool. So in theory, if I wanted to do something cool like this, oh yeah. So right-clicking causes a light source. And it's a neat looking light source at that. So I kind of like a bit of what it does. And I presume, of course, that if I want to, I can break that. I can just place a block in the space that the light source is and it gets rid of it. Neat. So nifty little light source going on there. Now, the shift right click feature is also really interesting. Uh, let's put away this for a sec and let's just do like a couple pieces of granite. So if I shift right click you, it should transform it into its luminescent form. It's basically a protection wand. It prevents this block from being destroyed. Um, and if I shift right click it again, it unprevents it from being destroyed. Now that's not bound to your player in any way. So if you're on a multiplayer server, it's not like all of a sudden you don't have to worry about, um, you know, like, like if somebody else had a wand, they could unprotect it, right? It's not bound to your player. So, uh, but if you're in a single player world, it prevents blocks from being broken. I'm not 100% sure if that works from wither explosions and I would like to consider trying it. Um, in the meantime, do, do, do. 
Still nothing. Looks like we're going to have to wait into another night time. I'm curious if there's any other um, constellations I'd like to make uh, a ritual out of. So, dispersing the light of this constellation and focus essence with a ritual causes the world destruction and disintegrates any solid block nearby. Probably don't want to do that. Not near my base, at least. Um, invigorated life force. Um, Crops flourish and grow at an accelerated rate, plus it gives regeneration to anybody nearby. So that's kind of cool. Grants a level of nimbleness, providing the ability to move faster and jump higher. Um, all enemies take damage nearby. This one, I think, prevents... It, it repulses any enemies nearby. Yeah. So I'm not too worried about that. Fornax... Melt stuff. This converts blocks into minerals. Uh, this one we kind of figured out already. It materializes and makes any machines tick faster, which is kind of a cool thing to have. Uh, this one is the one we're using to prevent mobs nearby. Octans is new, so we don't know anything about that. And Pelotorio Trio is new. But Boots, let's see. Um, when exposed to this kind of star, the animals close to it seem to relax but strangely age and set, shed some of their resources. Well, that's cool. What does that do? Hmm. All right. I think it's about time I move the last piece of astral sorcery back to the main base location, uh, or the newer one, I guess you could say. So with that, I just picked up all that stuff. But it's also coming up on nighttime, uh, and I kind of wanted to wait till nighttime to do one of two things. One, I wanted to discover more constellations if I could. So I think I've got about two more left to figure out, right? Is that right? I've got about two more. And the other thing I want to do is upgrade my altar to the final tier, the iridescent altar. Um, it's going to require um, pretty much some upgrades, um, but I'm, I'm going to probably build that out in a moment. It's also going to require me to upgrade the, the multi-block that sits under it. Uh, but it's going to allow me to make the final tier and unlock the last part of Astral Sorcery, which I'm pretty hyped about doing. Uh, so let's see here. Am I starting to see constellations? I am. All right, cool. Hey, what do we got there? That's a new one. Uh, so book. Book. What do we got here? Octans is a triangle over there. Oh, that's a weird looking one. So it's like uh, this with a triangle and a line down. I think that's this one. This with a triangle and a line down. Hey, discover constellation Pelotorio. Sweet. Uh, that doesn't appear to have anything. And I want to say that's probably the last, the last one to discover. But since there's no stars here, I have to assume that it's not out at this time. But let's see what the constellation Pelotorio does. Uh, and then Octans is, is coming up next. But Pelotorio, uh, cool. Sweet. Immersing the nearby area with the diffused light of this constellation just brings all kinds of beings to life. What's that do? Interesting. That's cool. I don't know what that means. I'm a little afraid to do it. Maybe it generates mob spawns? Oh. Very cool, though. I'm interested. I'm, my, my interest has peaked. Um, so I guess the what I should do first, because I already picked up all the blocks for it, is I want to make the attunement altar. Uh, so I'm going to build that real quick off camera. Um, and I think what, no, what, what better area to build it than this big open flat land that I've already got. So I have to bring up the attunement altar multi-block structure. Um, and I'm going to just build this real quick off camera. Um, as a reminder, it is 225 city marble. So yeah, we'll be right back in a minute. There we go, a tomb and altar, nice. I just wanted to have that placed before I moved on to the next stage of building this thing. So let's resonating on this. So here's the, there we go, nice, it's up and ready. Let's do it, let's do it. Big time particle effects, because we're making a big time craft. We are upgrading to the final tier of this altar. So it's gonna require two things. One, uh, it's gonna require me to expand the multi-block uh, and two, it's going to require the crafting pattern I just did with lots and lots of starlight energy. But that shouldn't be a problem for us uh, because, long story short, we're done. Nice. Awesome. So uh, let me get the multi-block ready here to build. And we also learned the Radiance chapter, but we'll take care of that after we do this dude. All right, so if I studied the book properly, first I do this. Uh, and then, right, so that's 
these things. The nice thing about the tier 4 to tier 5 altar, apparently the mod author got enough complaints about having to completely destroy the altar and rebuild it from scratch every time there was an upgrade, that um, he set it up such that when you upgrade from tier 4 to tier 5, you add on to the existing altar rather than ripping down the old one. So all you gotta do is place a few blocks and you're good to go. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is temporarily place blocks here so that I can place a block here. Just kind of doing this in a mirrored sort of pattern for myself. Um, and as with previous altars, this thing's all red until we get to the point where we can do something neat. Uh, so basically a five. So like one, two, 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 one, two. Are you good? Whoa, hello, we've got a bright shiny crystal going on right there. That's a good indication that we did something right. Sweet. We have a top tier altar. Not only is it top tier, but since we already have a super awesome celestial crystal right here, uh, it's already top tier and fully powered during the day. Remember, a higher tier altar needs more power to be fully filled up here. So the fact that this bar is all the way full during the day is insane. It means that like we are getting just a silly amount of power from this collector crystal. That is awesome. So uh, good things are afoot here, guys. All right, uh, let's come back. Well, no, let's not come back. Let's let's right now go flipping through uh, something in the book. So I'm gonna put all this stuff away that I don't need for a moment, and we can now take a look at. So there's a few things we didn't look at in this chapter, by the way. We may look at some point. The stellar refraction table is cool. It's basically a way to create potions and enchantments. Um, so you can like customize certain potions and enchantments. Uh, the ritual anchor lets you redirect a ritual's location. So um, we may look at that in the future as we look at more rituals, because I do want to play with a few more rituals. I just haven't decided which one I want to play with yet. Uh, we did look at infused crystal tools. They are pretty nice, um, but long story short, uh, they're, they're basically like neat tools for mining and stuff, and I've kind of already got some good ones there. The tree beacon is used for a tree farm. We already have a tree farm, so I'm gonna hold off on that as well. Um, the crystal prism lets you, um, you can use lenses to, to transmit starlight from further away locations. So if I wanted this collector crystal really far away, I could transmit it over here with, with lenses and the prism lets you split that. So those are just a few of the things we didn't look at yet. But the next chapter opens up some other cool stuff. Um, so what do we got here? Uh, we got a bunch of things. Uh, so we've got mantle of the stars and containment chalice, what's that do? The light well is certainly nice and functional, however its basin seems small. Um, so all that liquid uses more space than it's worth. Okay. That's cool. 24 buckets of liquid. So it's basically a fluid container. All right, looks like the stars are just starting to come out here. Uh, so as a result, let's see if I can't get any luck. Ooh, I see stuff, hold on. Nobody panic, but I think we can unlock the final constellation. Uh, and that would be Octans. So it's gonna be a triangle with a point coming off the end. So it's gonna be a triangle with a point coming off the end. It's a simple minor one, but hey, that's totally it. It just didn't wanna register my, my stuff. Come on, Octans, behave for me, would you? Hey, there we go, nice. I think that's the last one. I think we've now got pretty much all of them. Um, so, powered by solid, this ritual tracks fish and nearby water blocks, allowing them to be harvested. That's interesting. That sounds really cool. Okay. Notice that, by the way, there's new constellation options that you can play with. Um, I totally want to do... I totally want to do... another horologium that would be cool all right so now that we've unlocked all the constellation types i definitely kind of sort of thinking about wanting to play around uh with some of the the rituals that are available i just have to decide which ones i want to do but for now what i'd like to look at is upgrading my resonating wand and attuning it to some of the major constellations that are available remember there's five major constellations and there is an attuned wand for each of them i want to check out a couple um so Armara basically um, can be used as a shield and, and helps you out when you're being hit. 
by enemies. Uh, Dissidia is good for attacking enemies, um, uh, and, and your attacks become more uh, powerful as you attack things, basically. Uh, Evorcio looks like some kind of vein miner type effect, where when you break a block, it'll block, break blocks around it with the same type as the one broken. Uh, I maybe want to check that out a little bit. Uh, Avidus is cool. It creates a bridge underneath your feet. So pretty much any time you're walking, there'll be a bridge of starlight created underneath your feet. Uh, and the one I want to check out first is Visio. This one allows you to fling yourself forward in the air. Um, it doesn't allow you to fly, but I have something that lets me fly. So I'm kind of curious like how that's going to work out. So let's see how to craft with this. Um, so in order to craft with this, it's a little tricky, but I think we can do it. So uh, sugar canes, arrows, feathers, and aquamarines, right? So sugar canes, arrows, hey, I said arrows, feathers, and aquamarines. Cool. Um, so, so this guy... So there's, there's a couple different ways to craft with this table. Uh, the one that I'm doing, I only need uh, to specify certain things. But other crafts, specifically like with the Mantle of the Stars, uh, there or um, let's see, I think under Constellations it would show, like this, for example. Um, we can infuse our Mantle of the Stars with certain effects, which are pretty cool. Um, yeah. That's neat. Um, we're going to take a look at the Mantle of the Stars. But with that, you have to like align to a certain constellation, and you can kind of see it there. Um, but for this that we're crafting, I don't think we have to. I think we just give it a hit. And what's going to happen is, as the infusion process is going, you'll notice that in the book, um, it tells me that there's certain items I have to put around, and it's kind of floating here. And what's going to happen is, uh, I believe, we're going to want Spectral Relays to be on hand for this. I think. You're still crafting, right? Does it matter? I might need the spectral relays to be down already. I'm going to put one there. I think there's four. I forget if you place them down first or not, but we'll do that and we'll see how that works out. And then one of the relays will start glowing. And that's where you put one of the items that are needed. Um, there it is. Nice. So I just drop a feather in there. And some of the ritual effects need all the same items. So this one needs four feathers, so it's easy. But the other ones uh, need different items in different spots, which is why it renders like the image that needs to go there, like as a ghost image. And then you just right click it with the actual item and it'll, it'll go. Um, so that's pretty nifty. So in this case, I could probably just drop the feathers right on the thing, but for now we'll let, we'll let it do its thing. Um, it's becoming daytime, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Nice. That is some spiffiness right there. And now it's going to infuse those feathers into that wand along with the other items that it has, and we should be in pretty good shape. Go, crafting process, go. Gotta say, lots of cool sparkles and particles in this mod. I assume that's all that's needed? I hope I'm right about that. Hey, yeah, that's all that's needed. Sweet, it completed the craft. All right, so I'm kind of curious. I can charge it up. That's not too bad. Not bad at all. So obviously, had I not had an angel ring, this could be kind of cool as a method of getting around. But the angel ring obviously is pretty good. It wouldn't be terrible for traveling with. I kind of want to try out Armara too, so that's why I have another resonating wand here. So let's try this guy out. So it should be star metal, nether brick, and leather, right? So star metal, nether brick, and leather. Boom. And this will make me a nifty wand that'll help be a nice shield. So whenever I am going into combat, it might just be like an extra protection thing for me, which would be kind of nifty. Um, I'm pretty sure I can just drop iron into all these guys. So I'm gonna like do that, and then hopefully that'll craft no problem. I suspect it will, and we'll be back in a minute. All right, so now we've got an Armara resonating wand. I'm pretty sure I can hold this in my offhand, I would think. 
Um, and then, ooh, look at that. I've got some kind of cool particle effects going on when I hold that thing. I should go find some monsters and see what it does. Just curious. Oh, neat. I don't even have to hold right click on it, I think. Is that right? Yeah, look at that. I'm glowing, I'm glowing without holding right click. Not as much. It seems like I'm glowing more if I hold right click. But yeah, maybe it did say I can use it like a shield, right? So, uh, that's cool. Hey, Cave Spider, come here. Oh, look, there's a creeper there. I'd, I'd rather see like a skeleton or something like that would be nice to run into here. I guess to be fair, I could go to the deep dark or something like that, but. Yeah, let's go to the deep dark. That sounds like a good time, right? That shouldn't be too bad. Oh, that's nifty. Just throw it in your offhand and you've got like some cool protection against badness. Sign me up. Not that like I'm, you know, hurting for protection from badness, but we're gonna probably be fighting some nasty stuff in the near future and there, there, there could be a benefit to having this nifty wand. All right, let's head downstairs and see what kind of protection this yields for us. So apparently you get some protection just from having it in your offhand, and it looks like even more. If, if the particle effects are any indication, you get even more from holding right-click with it. So I guess now would be a good time for skeletons to spawn nearby. Oh, skeletons, where far art thou? There's creepers. Hey, there's a skeleton. So I'm going to hold right-click with this. Ha-ha, <laughs> that is cool. Good luck, buddy. Not today, thank you. Now what if I'm not holding right click? So it still hits me. Oh, that's interesting. There was like, for a moment there, it looked like I had like, oh yeah, look at that. It gives me like a little boost. It gives me resistance and absorption when I'm holding right click and I get hit. That is neat. So what about creepers? Go ahead, creepers. That is, that is a cool, that is a cool thing. So it's like an, an unlimited shield that's like 360 around me. Because even, like, I don't even have to be facing the dudes. They're hitting me from behind and the front, and it's like, okay, I think. Well, I might be a little bit long, wrong about that. Okay, so they can hit me from behind. Or they can't hit, yeah, they, they can, you know, hit me from behind and I'll still take damage. But it looks like it covers my front at least. That's cool. I like that thing a lot. All right, back in a second. All right, guys, now the final thing that we haven't looked at yet is the Mantle of the Stars, which is pretty nifty. It's basically an armor piece, um, but it's cool in that you can apply certain properties to it. Um, and if you look at the effects, you can take a look at the constellations here and see what all the different effects can be. So for example, uh, this effect, uh, Infused Cloak enhances your destructive potential, allowing you to break down walls with ease and damage hordes of enemies standing close together. Uh, nice. That's pretty cool. Avidus, uh, mantle effect, will, uh, your hunger regenerates and produces an aura of healing. Furthermore, plants twist to your whims when within close proximity, turn them into others of their kind. That sounds cool. Uh, so this is like a really powerful armor piece. Um, reducing your weight to ride the currents of the wind, allowing you to fly like one with an elytra. Well, I don't really need that one, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, draw strength from your enemies, blows, empowering your own against them. Once hit, the wearer gains the damage he took as an additional damage each hit. That's cool. Uh, Armara is a protective one. Um, that's cool. Protects me completely from a single attack over time. Uh, now I forget if the minor constellations have mantle effects. Oh, it looks like they do. Cool. Um, fire regenerates your fresh rather than scorching it. That's cool. That's pretty neat. Uh, that's cool. Mineralis. Uh, allowing the wearer to see the locations of currently held block. Oh, that's a cool one. If you hold a block in your hand, you can see the location of that block in the world nearby. So like if you held a diamond block, for example, like not, not like a diamond block, but a diamond ore block, you would see other diamond ore in the world. Uh, Horoglum, um, 
Th this is like the really powerful thing, and I'm not seeing it in the sky a lot, so I messaged the mod author. He said it's like once every like 30 Minecraft nights does this one hit the sky. So it's super rare that this constellation's up. And remember, the constellation has to be up to empower certain things. I'm guessing it has to be up to empower the mantle, but that's pretty neat. Freeze everything nearby. Oh, that sounds cool. Uh, Lucerna does what? Um, well, perturb mobs around you, revealing their location. Singular locations where mobs spawn forth from a small cage and seemingly endless number react particularly strong. That would be a cool way to find mob spawners underground. Octans, uh, the affinity this constellation has with water means wearing a cape infused with it. Light makes water no longer an impediment to you than air. That's cool. Infinite water breathing and underwater mining is good. Boots, um, flares to flock to you, following you in your travels and assisting you in combat. And Pelotorio, um, starlight into animated tools, which may the wearer's behavior when breaking a block of the pickaxe, chopping down a tree with an axe, or even hitting any. So that's cool. So all these look neat. I'm not sure like which, probably more than one mantle I'd like to play with at some point. And then also, uh, there's this everlasting fountain thing. I kind of read it and didn't fully understand what it was about. Uh, but then again, I was talking to the mod author and he kind of filled me in. Basically, there's underneath bedrock, there are reservoirs of liquid and those fountains can pull them up. And there's basically a specific type of liquid in each chunk. Now, hey you, shouldn't you be preventing mob spawns? Why are you letting mobs spawn? I might have to empower that thing a little bit. Looks like it's being a little bit weak tonight. Um, maybe Lucerna's not in the sky? Is that it? Constellations? Which one's Lucerna? Yeah, it's the star one. Oh, it's in the sky, all right. So I don't know why mobs are allowed to spawn today. Are you being naughty, Mr. Ritual? But um, long story short, it's not just water and lava. Like other mods, liquids can be found of varying rareness. So I might want to check that out because it could be cool to pull up a bunch of liquid. But it is unfortunately wrapping up point for this episode. So next episode, we may come back and check out the Mantle of the Stars, or we might hold off for a little bit and uh, consider playing around with some other stuff, uh, maybe look into some other mods. It might be getting close to the point where I want to get into a Wither Battle too, because um, I'm getting to the point where Nether Stars are starting to become a requirement in some of my builds. But for now, Devil20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.